Hi guys, Matt Collins here from Beausoleil. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about throwing sticks. We're going to be looking at different types of sticks, when to use them, how to get the best out of them, and how to avoid those common pitfalls. Let's get into it now. Firstly, let's look at why you might want to use the throwing stick as opposed to a catapult. Catapults are very common in carp fishing. Everyone's got a few probably stashed in their tackle bag. The biggest problem with catapults is of course the elastics break. You get rash on your knuckles and they're also distance limited. I've been using throwing sticks for about 15 years. I know when I first started to use one, I found it quite hard. And for the first couple of years, I had a few goes, gave up, went back to a catapult. What I want to take you through is the progression that I used in order to develop my skills to be able to get the best use out of a throwing stick. When I was learning how to use throwing sticks, what changed everything for me was to go down to a really short stick. There are various different brands available. This happens to be one by Nash. I think it's the Nash, um, it's the, it's the Nash Cobra. This is 15 year old stick. It's absolutely bomb proof, but it's a really good place to start with throwing sticks. It's no good for long range baiting at all, but if you're starting out, it's a great place to start. So it's really important to prepare your bait correctly for, uh, for use of a throwing stick. Also to use the right size of bait relative to the stick. I've just taken out some baits here from the freezer and um, you can use frozen baits in a stick, but it's unless you, unless you really have to, I would avoid doing this. The thing is a frozen bait, it's going to skate along the stick and you want to dry bait because if it's not dry, you won't get the backspin effect that the stick generates. So always take your bait out of the freezer well in advance if you're using frozen bait. Even if you're just using shelf life bait, it's always best to air dry it. At short range, you can get away with bait that's taken out the day before and then use it the next day for throwing sticks. If you're baiting at any sort of range, you might need to leave it two, three, or even four days to air dry so that it's solid enough to go out of the stick. The other really important factor with throwing sticks is bait roundness. The ones over here, perfectly round and they're gonna fly beautifully. These on the left here, are dumbbell shaped. They will kind of go out of the stick, but they're not gonna fly so straight. They're not gonna go as far either. So the dumbbell ones will work, but they're gonna be distance limited and they're not gonna be as accurate as the round baits. It's really important when you're doing throwing stick work to stand in the same place. You don't wanna be bending down to a bucket, keep on having to pick up handfuls of bait. A lot of the time I'll just grab a few baits and stick them in my hoodie, just like that. If you're putting out serious quantities of bait, I use a bait pouch. Okay, let's have a go with this uh, nice little short stick now. Got a perfect target over my left shoulder here. It's about 40 yards away. Perfect sort of range for a little stick like this. So when you get into the rhythm with one of these things, even with just one bait at a time, you can get bait out quite quickly. Now, sure, I'm spraying baits around there. Are they going all in the same place? No, you know, there must've been a five, six meter spread there, easy. But that's good. These tools are designed to dot baits around, make the fish move from bait to bait. That's the strategy. We don't want them too accurate. To give you a better idea of the technique I'm using with this stick, what we're gonna do now is film side on and in slow motion. 
So let's look at how we set up for using a throwing stick. The stance, an open stance, very similar to, uh, to casting really. Back leg kind of pointed out either 90 degrees or 45 degrees to the target, something like that. Left foot either pointing directly at the target or a little, little bit to the right, whatever's comfortable for you really, but a nice, easy, stable, open stance that opens the shoulders out and enables movement, rotational movement from the hips to get energy into the arm, into the hand, and it gives you speed in the stick. The left hand here plays a role as well. It keeps us balanced. I also kind of use it as a, as a, as a target, if you like. So my left hand's always pointing exactly where I want to throw and just open and relax like that. We go from the rear position, rotate around to the stop position. Now it's really important, just like when we're casting, we need to stop the stick. If we don't stop the stick, we don't transfer the energy from the stick into the bait. It's no good just kind of doing that and continuing the motion. If you do that, all you're going to do is splat baits into the water. So, nice easy open stance, soften the knees, left hand at the target, right hand back, and we just rotate from the hips through to our stop position. And we need the line of the stick to travel straight from back to rear. If we do that, the bait will fly straight and it will go where we want it to go. So little sticks like this are perfect, probably distance limited to about 50 yards, something like that, with a, with a 20 mil bait. So once you've mastered a small stick like this, you might want to consider getting a longer stick. What you've got to be really careful of is different manufacturers have different ways of designating their sticks. And this poses as a problem when choosing a stick with regards to bait diameter. Now, I think Nash, I think I've had this stick such a long time, I can't remember, but I believe it was um, a 20 mil stick when I, when I bought it. So you might find that certain manufacturers of baits, even though they say they're 20 mil, they might not go in the stick that you've got. Now, I know this works absolutely fantastic with 18 mil baits. And that's just the way it is. So if you can possibly get your hands on a, on a stick before you buy one and test what size of bait that it works best with, then that's, that's a great option. As a general rule of thumb, I'd be looking for the actual internal diameter of the stick to be at least three mil larger than the bait that you're trying to put out. If it's too tight, it's just not going to fly well. The longer the throwing stick, the further out you can throw baits, basically. I'm just going to flick my marker rod here out to about 80 yards, something like that, and we'll spray a few baits around that. Okay, marker floats out. I haven't measured the distance, but that's 75, 80 yards, something like that. What I've got here is a kind of classic, uh, it's the Corder Easy stick. This is the 24 mil version. They do, a, they do a smaller 20 mil version as well. I've got some air dried 22 mil baits here. So these are gonna absolutely fly out of this. Heavier baits will go further. I think these baits have been air drying for about four weeks now, so they're absolutely rock hard and they've lost a lot of their moisture content, so they won't go as far as, uh, as normal. I found the optimum kind of air dry time for long range throwing stick work three or four days.
if you try and do long range throw and stick work with baits that you've taken out the day before it's likely that what you're going to find is the baits are exploding in flight this is because the throwing stick is inducing backspin and it's the backspin that literally the centrifugal forces are smashing that bait apart so if you're in a fishing situation and you're trying to get maximum range and the baits are exploding the baits are too soft one of the bits of advice that you might have you might have seen before i've certainly seen before uh, is if you're getting problems with exploding baits is to dip the stick so let's have a go at that now what i've found is that that might solve your bait splitting problem but it reduces the friction between the bait and the stick and it takes the backspin out it's the backspin that's getting us the distance that we need so if i if i have a go with these now what i'll find is i'll be even shorter to start with until the stick dries out You'll also see that they go all over the place. I've never really got anywhere by dipping the stick. I find it's better to get the bait exactly the right hardness, keep the stick dry, and you'll get on well. There is definitely a learning curve from going from a short stick to a larger stick like this. These sticks are heavier. You've got a bigger arc to contend with. You've got more weight to stop in order to get the reaction to transfer the energy into the bait. The basic action is very similar. Stance is the same, action is the same. We're still using our hand to keep our balance there and transfer the energy into the stick. Once you've mastered something like the easy stick, if you're doing a lot of throwing stick work, you might want to consider investing in something like one of these carbon sticks. So this is a fairly inexpensive one. I think it's a 22 mil diameter. Carbon sticks are much, much lighter reduces arm fatigue in theory you can get more distance there is a downside though they are noisy so if you're going for the stealthy approach carbon sticks probably not the one Oops. So you can see from that set of baits, I was using about the same amount of force. They're going absolutely miles. Some of them split apart. That was because I only took those baits out, the, those 20 mil baits out of the freezer yesterday. So that's the exploding bait problem. But they also had the weight to go a very long way. So if you want to get extreme range, then these carbon sticks, and this is a long distance carbon stick as well, can put a bait a very long way indeed. So throwing sticks are a fabulous baiting up tool. I've used them for years in my carp fishing. Doesn't matter what throwing stick you buy, the biggest drawback is the fact that on some waters, the seagulls have learnt to pluck baits out of the air or pluck them off the surface of the water. The only way I've found to reduce the impact of this is either to bait in short bursts, put out three baits, put out six baits, sit down, wait half an hour and go back and do it again, or to bait up at dawn or dusk or even bait up at night. I hope you found those tips on throwing sticks useful. If you've got any questions, do leave a comment. I always do my best to reply.